Hi, my name's Peter Borg, and we're sitting here with Sai Says ahead of the 11th birthday party of Simply Salacious taking place at Plan B in Brixton, May 23rd. And I thought I'd just have a quick catch up with my pal Sai to understand a bit more about him. Hi, Sai, how Hello. are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good afternoon. What a lovely day it is today. Isn't it just? Thanks yeah. for taking the time out. Um, I just wanted to find a bit more about you. Um, looking back at Simply Salacious, you've, you've played for Simply Salacious since 2007. Wow, Back is that, that long? Yeah. 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 It's a long time. Yeah. So that's got to be, what, eight years ago? Yeah, man. Um, obviously now with the 11th birthday coming up, what, I just want to get a bit more of an understanding about you yourself, your influences growing up, how you got into house music. So you know, give us a bit of a, an idea about how you actually started into this scene. Um, well, when I was younger, like the early 90s, late 80s, it was when there was like how, the explosion of house kind of a little bit what's happening now in the youth culture but that time round it was fresh we'd never heard it before so it was just for me it was like an epidemic of house music throughout the younger generations you know of the illegal raves and all the parties and all the fields around the m25s and illegal radio stations and stuff like that i mean i was still really really young then like a young teenager but um i always had you know older cousins older friends that i kind of moved around with and things like that so that's kind of like you know where i first really got a taste and I got an experience of it. Okay. There was a lot of like also graffiti crews and break dancing crews as well in them days and I kind of used to follow some of the older lot around and I used to be transfixed on a DJ all the time. It was the music that really got hold of me. Okay, so who was that DJ that really kind of did that for you back then? Oh, do you know what, I can't, in, that, in my real, real younger years like that, it was more just like my peers or like, you know, some of the older lot or someone from round away. But it wasn't until I started eventually getting let into nightclubs when I saw DJs like um, Tony Humphreys or Paul Trouble Anderson and Masters at Work and people like that, that I really started getting the bug for it big time. So that's how you started becoming a DJ as well. When was, when was that transition that you started to actually want to want to be a DJ yeah again like seeing those guys and you know there was for me it was something about seeing a man behind a behind a set working a pair of turntables and a mixer for me that used to just you know it would just interest me more than anything you know I wanted to kind of like I just wanted to have a go myself I wanted to touch the mixer and yeah. you know try things and it was that that kind of led me to to experimenting with it I know like a friend of mine had a pair of Technics back in the day and like an old, old school mixer and you know, we just jumped on there and boom, that was it. I can't even really remember the exact date or time, but it was something I was always drawn to from, from a, a very young age. Okay. And then obviously since then, you've gone on to do this full time. You've become a producer as well. And obviously the, the great thing now is you travelled around the world and you play obviously for your residencies at Soul Heaven as well and various yep. other things around the world. Yeah. Um, I, I remember seeing you in Amsterdam actually at ADE playing there as well which you know it, it was a different crowd but you had the crowd in the palm of your hand thank you which was which was really nice and yeah going back to the gigs that you you played for simply salacious over the years what do you think is 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 special about simply salacious or really that, that, that you actually look forward to doing and playing that at a simply salacious party you peter okay you're right <laughs> <laughs> aside, aside of me, obviously. <laughs> no but i mean it is down to you responsible i mean you're the main driving horse behind it but i think what you've created over the 11 years it's like you know you know what you're going to get at simply salacious well as a dj i feel like i'm going to get a crowd that's up for soulful music but also very uplifting music um, and not just like brand new fresh fresh music you know your crowd kind of like the classics as well which is you know very important to djs like me because i like to play a lot of classics you sure. know um but i just think that you've got a certain energy in your crowd as well and it, again it's something that you've built up over 11 years so it's tried and tested and you've you know you've got that hardcore following and you know you've got that that you know people believe in your brand you know you've got you, you have international guests i think you always i think at a simply salacious party especially in the last few years there's always been like a delivery for me do you know what i mean there's always been the party's been like a hundred percent bang on. I mean, I think I've done the 10th birthday That's party. Right. With uh, Charisma and Atjaz. Yeah, and the Charisma and Atjaz were doing like a big- Exist thing. Yeah, a big showcase. And I was playing, not early, but I know there was like Teddy and people doing warm up first, but even at like midnight, that place, uh, you know, bearing in mind, we go on till six, seven in the morning. Mid by midnight, that place was like burning up already. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I just remember it was, as a DJ, it's kind of like, 
when I was playing, I, you know, I could have just gone and took the roof off. But I know that, you know, Charisma and them lot are coming on after me. But it was almost like a boiling point from early. I but that's the great thing about me seeing you play at Simple Solutions. The amount of people that know where you're going to go, you know, that understand exactly that you've got the audience, in, if you like, in the palm of your hand to be able to say, do you know what? We trust Inside Says. Yeah. You know, which is which is super cool about it. And obviously now we've got the 11th birthday party coming up with Sandy Rivera, Paul Trouble Anderson as well. Yeah. Um, growing up, you mentioned that, you know, Paul was one of your DJs that you, you used to listen out for. Definitely, man, yeah. yeah. What, what do you think he brings different to a party? Just energy, man. I just think his, his energy's even like now. Do you know what I mean? is unrivaled i mean i first saw trouble in um a club which has been pulled down now called coliseum i think well i definitely remember him from there and it was a little side room in the main room it was a more like a harder house sound and in the little side room you had like people like bobby and steve um seamus haji jeremy newell people like that <clears throat> and trouble was one of the guests they used to get and I, i'll never forget when i first saw him or i used to watch him as like a young teenager and aspiring DJ, you know, he'd, he'd dance and he'd spin round, but the mu even the music he was playing, the music he was playing, we were like, what the hell is this? What yeah. is that? It was that heart, heart pounding, soulful music that you just didn't hear in, cl in house clubs. And then there was this like guy, he just looked at him, he's a superstar, he's still a superstar now, but back then, in the early 90s, the guy was like, you know, spinning around, jumping up, lights flashing everywhere. You know, you wanted to be like people like me. You wanted to be like him. You know, I'm, you know, one of my other loves in life is is football. Do you know what I mean? And I played football, and there was players that I looked at that you wanted to be like as a kid. Do you know what I mean? Like the Gascoigns and people like that. And so, with the 11th birthday party coming ahead in a couple of weeks' time, Sandy Rivera's on there, Paul Trouble Anderson's on there. What is it you think is 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 so exciting about seeing Sandy and and, and Trouble on the same lineup? I just think again, energy for me like Trouble's got this this enigmatic energy and also Sandy for me when he plays he's a very tactile interactive DJ I played with him like a couple of months ago in, in Nottingham and I was supporting him on a big soul heaven party up there and literally it's like you know you, it's like you're playing with a superstar you feel like you're on tour on concert with someone because obviously he made finally he's made you know massive records that you know, even my mum's into records up finally. I think he reached out to a massive global audience with that track and people just love him. And when he plays, you know, he's very interactive with the crowd. And at plan B, you've got a kind of DJ booth where he can reach over and he can touch the crowd. That's right. And I, I just think that element of it is going to add that extra bit of spice to the party. And also I think <clears throat> like what the music that they both play, especially Sandy. Sandy's like known for playing like how he produces that anthem like music soulful again soulful uplifting big vocals and it, that's that's what your crowd's all about mm. so i just think it's a match made in heaven i'm really looking forward to actually when he i hope he drops finally because that's yeah. that's a big crowd pleaser at well Salacious. yeah well when i played in nottingham with him at so heaven again i was kind of like middle set so they have their residence on then i go on and literally the club is is at absolute boiling point before this man comes on and you know that's testament to me as a as, as not a warm-up DJ, but keeping it to where I know he's got to go to. And he came on and he introed with um, Finally. But it wasn't a, the original Kings of Tomorrow version. It was actually like a new remix by a guy called Sonny Federa. Okay. But as soon as they hear that the first... Food come out to play. As soon as they hear that first note, that first phrase of vocals, that's it. You know, the clubs, that, that's it, mate. Do you know what I mean? I've got videos of it on my phone. And I think when he comes to our party, um, he's going to give that crowd... And again, he's a DJ that he, on our scene, as big as our scene is and how long we've been out here, you know, like 11 years, Simply Salacious, 11 years old. When was the last time you saw Sandy Riviera play? Especially yeah. in London. Yeah, and, and he's that sort of record. I can play finally and you can play it and, you know, Charisma or Neil or anyone can play it and we'll get a big reaction. Yeah. We know that. I play that record around the world, but when he plays it, it's like Louis Vega playing I Can't Get No Sleep. It's, it's something different about the guy that made that record sure. playing it. And you know what? I'm looking forward to that, man. Do you know what I mean? And he's got great hair as well, mate. I wish I, <laughs> I, wish I had hair like Sandy, mate. I'm you. I wish you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? All joking aside, you know, um, the, the, the London scenes, as you said earlier, it seems to be going through a bit of an explosion now. It's reaching out to a younger crowd. Yeah, man. It's getting a lot more love. Definitely. There, there was a stage where it kind of moved a little bit away. Yep. And now it seems to, have, to be having a, a, a little explosion. Sure. What, what do you think the future holds for house music now? 
I think there is there is there, there's no limit like for house music now. Um, I think that you know whether you love it or hate it, it's there. It's arrived into the commercial galaxy of music, and you know, it, it, I just I honestly think that you know it, there is no limit for house music now, and I think that people like Sandy and these guys that come from the old school part of house music, I think they're gonna they possibly got a shot at maybe bringing some of their songs like even more global than, it, than it's ever been before do you know what i mean um and i think that's testament to people like disclosure and and, and groups like that as well but I, I honestly think like you're gonna see like you know some someone like sandy riviera or maybe not louis vega but someone from the world we come from breaking into like the, the national the way that morales did back in the day exactly the way that... i think that's gonna come back round again yeah and i think it's almost it's before like you know what we talked about at the beginning of the interview when I first got into house the late 80s very early 90s we'd never heard house before so it was a slight different movement now all kids are getting into it even this little guy sitting next to us probably into house music you into house music <laughs> you don't know but he's probably definitely heard it <laughs> in a few years time but what I'm saying is you know there's kids that are dancing around now to House, house, house records. I mean, look, there was a number one with Storm Queen, MK, yeah. who's a legendary producer from the 90s. So I just think now it's, you know, it's so far ingrained into society. It's like a household genre. It's, it's like, it's popular, Which it has it? become that reputation yeah. now. And we're, we're really lucky that 11 years on, if you like, that we're still getting new people come to Definitely. our dance floors, that we're still getting so important, the younger man. audience exactly. coming and, and being able to tell their yeah. friends, you know what, I went to this party. Definitely. I mean, the, the, just looking at the last couple of parties with Tony Humphreys yeah. and, and, and Charisma, it was a nice mixture. mixture. To thank Sai for coming down for this, this interview. It's no been an problem. absolute pleasure. Thank you. So don't forget, May 23rd, Simply Salacious Parties, 11th birthday, Sandy Rivera, Paul Trouble Anderson. This man here, Sai says, Yours truly, Peter Borg, a live PA from April. More information, simplysalacious.co.uk. See you there.